and welcome to episode 5 of the Creative Constitution podcast. Today, it's all about storyboarding. Yeah. Should we storyboard or should we not storyboard? The importance of storyboarding within a film, within your own personal film project, perhaps, or within other films. Music videos. Yeah. Is it important? How relevant is it? What does it do? Does it build team morale to some extent? Having a top quality storyboard, does it uh, make others that you're getting on board to shoot your project with you or collaborate with, does it give them uh, more confidence within Maybe. that project? Let's. I'm Let's interested to see what you think because I don't really know because to me I haven't had to do that for a lot of projects, but I know you have. Well, you have your own style. I know that's for sure. So when you're doing your own projects whether that's like a little storyboard of what you are thinking for your music video or how you were working on your cartoons for some time i mean it's still the same principle isn't it you're kind of creating the idea of what each frame is going to look like mm. and seeing whether that could be a good finished project personally i just draw i because obviously i i'm not really thinking in a technical film frame perspective i'm 100% creative brain engaged whenever I'm drafting something like that. So it's sort of, it's an image, it's a picture, it's a idea of the scene, but it's not necessarily how it will be shot. Mm. I would personally, I would leave that up to uh, the DOP or perhaps the director of the music video or the DOP if we're talking short films or something like that. Mm, good point. Uh, I, would, I would leave a lot of that as creative choice to the person appointed to make those decisions. Um, but when we're talking films, what what are your views on that? Would you do something different or what sort of approach would you go with? Yeah, for sure. Well, first of all, what what is storyboarding, right? And to some that may be perfectly crafted images or drawings or illustrations of each frame in a film. And it could go all the way down to stick figures or being these amazing creations that could be a book in its own right. Right. So storyboarding is really in principle, like what you are trying to achieve when it comes to a film or a creative project or a commercial and kind of putting that into like a frame by frame basis. So you could use tools like Canva or Photoshop or even just use a notebook, draw some squares on a piece of paper and start filling in each main frame that you are thinking of using during your project. For me personally, now having directed a number of projects, I storyboard every time. I think storyboarding is so critical for me to be able to put my imagination onto paper and to also give that information to a DOP, a director of photography, and for them to understand my vision as best as possible. Because if I'm just telling someone Oh, I want it to be a close-up. Well, how close? Do you want it to yeah. be of just the eyes? Do you want it to be of the whole face? I mean, someone's definition of a close-up might be completely different to what your definition of a close-up is. Okay. And likewise, when it comes to like camera movements, you can there are di there are different tr kind of tricks you can do when you're storyboarding to show that. So if I wanted the camera to push in. I could draw a frame within a frame to then show that movement of where I'd like it to start and where I'd like it to end. But if I don't have a storyboard, then how does the DOP know when to stop? Yeah, fair enough. Or it, it just allows them to choose the lenses as well. It gives them a heads up on the sort of kit they will need to bring to that shoot Yeah. in advance. Wow, yeah, I didn't even think about that. Mm. That's really interesting. So storyboarding... I guess if you think of it in that sense, it plays a major role because it's not just you expressing your creative vision to your appointed DOP or your appointed you know, first cameraman or second yeah. camera. It's, it's literally as technical as it is a creative expression. I guess you're communicating creatively, but it's also a technical diagram on the sort yeah. of kit they will need to bring or you will need to prepare to actually shoot that, whether it's switching yeah. out lenses for the very next frame or the next 
scene exactly. or something. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I mean, and also when you're when you're writing a script, you don't you don't know exactly what the film is going to look like. So it kind of reduces your risk when you get onto set. If you know these are the frames that I'm I'm looking for, this is what I'd like the film to look like. And then it gives you so much more preparation in the pre-production phase where if you have a storyboard and you know shot A is going to look like this, shot B is going to look like that, it just gives everyone on the crew so much more information about what your vision is, what you're trying to achieve, mm. perhaps how long it's going to take to do each shot. Okay. And also it allows the lighting people to understand the angles. So, for example, if I wanted to do uh, two over the shoulders, but one is completely different than the other because I want the character on the left to be slightly more lit and then the other one slightly darker because that's the kind of character dynamic. Yeah. I can write that into a storyboard and then straight away the lighting person will be able to use the correct configuration to achieve that sort of look. One of the things that I prefer yeah. doing when I storyboard instead of just doing stick figures, which I do a lot of that. Same. Same. Um, I have a I have terrible <laughs> drawing ability, so stick figures is usually my starting point. And then I'll use tools like Shot Cafe, and there's a few others as well. Hey, if we could draw really well, we'd just make it an animated comic ourselves. That we? would be pretty. We cool, wouldn't actually. need other people to film it for us. We could just animate it, right? Yeah. So I'll go back to Shot Cafe yeah. and I'll actually try and find inspiration images. There are so many tools out there now that you can use to find inspiration images. And these are usually screenshots from existing films. So, so is this a website? It is, a, it is okay. a website. So it's called Shot Cafe. I'll, I'll put it in the show notes. But you go to this website or any other really, you could go on Google Images and look up close-ups um, maybe of the Joker or something like that. Or Use like still frames from still films. frames, And then you can screenshot them and yeah. throw them into a document that you're putting together for your crew. I find that that is so handy. Like for example, on Devoured, I created a whole document that was entirely just um, a bunch of images that I had found online from different movies, some of which I had never even seen before. But yeah. I really love the look of say the Dutch angle or one of the wide angle shots that were on there. So then it was really good to be able to take those and throw that into the document. Mm -hmm. They were really good for like lighting, uh, shot composition, and just the whole thing just looked amazing. And sometimes when you get onto set and everything's happening and you've got all, all things moving, it sometimes really helps to just go, okay, guys, this is what we're gonna do next. Have a look at this photo. We're doing the third one on the on the yeah. left. Yeah, you're not and referring to the just the script anymore. Yeah, and up in the air, up in the air, you've got solid documentation. Yeah, not only word written word, but solid documentation visually on yeah. exactly what you're going for, and the camera crew are going to look at that and know what they're going to need to use. Yeah. to get that exact. Hundred percent. Yeah. So that Amazing. saved us so much time on set because I would go, okay, we need to set up for the wide angle. And I really love the third frame from the left yes. on this document. Can we try and replicate that? Because people aren't mind readers, are they? Yeah. And I guess the, the larger the crew you get on, the bigger your project, the more people you get involved. Every new barrier of communication of communicating your vision to another person and, and translating that it's it could almost become chinese whispers i feel yes, yeah. on on a project that truly you know grows exactly so having this eliminates that and it's almost it it's sounding like it's a must as opposed to an optional yeah at the start of this uh this episode i was thinking oh that's right dis discuss um storyboarding yeah it's sort of an optional thing some people could, but after what you've just told me like it's all this a information yeah it just makes so much sense now well when me. you think about it an architect won't build a building without the papers, the blueprints. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They you don't know. go in with the script. Yeah, like, they. I okay, mean, they we... don't. They don't really rock up to a construction site with just some tools and a bit of wood and start building something. And so, and they need guidance. Written, yeah. They need guidance, and um, in a way, filmmakers should be no different. 
And whether that is storyboarding every single frame or storyboarding just the main real, like these are the, the frames that I must have in my project, you find that balance as a filmmaker. Okay. To me, I don't do frame by frame. That would take too long. Yes. Uh, but I also make sure that I have enough there so that I have, I make sure that the film itself has the f yeah. those specific images that I had in my brain when I wrote the script or when I wanted to create that project. Okay. And everyone will read a script differently. I mean, as a director, you're not always the writer. So sometimes you could get a piece of content and all of a sudden it starts playing in your head like a movie. And that's when really you can start storyboarding something. I mean, that's happened to me many times. Or even when you read a novel, sometimes you can imagine what's going on. Mm. Um, I'm not the super creative type, but sometimes I'll watch something and I'll be like, man, that was a really cool frame. I might yeah. just screenshot that to, yeah. to put that into a movie in the I might future. Just take that and use it a little later. Hmm, yeah. Put it in my well, pocket I mean, for another time. How many times have you seen a movie that has a lot used of times. similar? I've seen a movie a lot of times. I've seen a lot of movies yeah. a lot of times. But how many times have you seen a movie where they've used very similar frames and composition to other oh, things? Oh, we in see the it past? all the time now, right? Yeah. Three years ago, we were like, oh, this movie's cool. This movie's cool. And now it's like, oh, this movie's using like 50% of the same shots as the last film by yeah. that director. This this movie is like scene for scene. The, the car shot is exactly the same. The enters hotel room is exactly the same shot. Yeah. The whole scene is identical to the, you know, their previous film where there was a hotel entrance scene five years ago. Yeah. It's amazing. So when you same. look for it, it, it becomes very formulaic. Exactly. And Obviously, you get creative within inspirational images. Yeah. But a lot of filmmaking is very similar. Yeah, well, it's like food in a sense, right? You have the recipe. You know yeah. how to make the best garlic prawns or whatever and, and fried rice. You're generally going to stick to the recipe. Yeah. For communicating that dish in the best way possible that you like to communicate it to your exactly. audience. Yeah. So when I, when I take those shot inspirations from Shot Cafe or another, another website, that's when usually I can almost put together a movie just by using the images as inspiration. Yeah. And then you can get creative based on your own location and your own kind of environment and what you're, and most of the camera movements as well. So if you have a shot that's a close up, maybe the thing that you're doing differently is that now it's pushing in or use a dolly to make it more interesting. Uh, but going back to the storyboarding and the whole architect idea, I think the one thing that differentiates filmmaking from something that is much more structural, like being an architect and having to have perfect precision when it comes to the building process, filmmaking allows you to be more creative. So in a way, if you structure too much within that creative endeavor you might end up leaving no room for something magical to occur on set and that's yeah. something that usually is the alternative the alternative argument to not storyboarding some yeah, filmmakers would prefer room, to have that room, room for move. movement i mean which is nice but you only need so much and that's that's why there's a there's an option a and an option b <laughs> you're gonna have a film that is uh, literally room for movement yeah. the whole film or are you going to have a planned piece of art that has been in your head yeah you're communicating to people well that's the difference right or it I could mean, be like we just said chinese whispers and yeah. then it's, the ideas just don't come through i mean some people can so. run and gun a film i personally can't yeah. i personally get stressed by the thought of not having things almost planned to a t Maybe that is because I am more of a structured person. But if I was a filmmaker that was kind of just trying to um, to create something really different, really out there, really abstract, then I probably would storyboard a lot less and just see what, what strikes me in that moment of inspiration as you're filming something. Fair enough. But in general, I would definitely, in general, I would definitely try and storyboard. That's just my personal choice. No, 100%. 
I think that would work for people that are maybe making art house films, experimental stuff. Mm. You know, why not? Uh, but yeah, if you've got a clear idea, it it sounds like this is a must. It really sounds like this storyboarding thing is a must now. So you've been working on your own music video. Yes. And I've seen some drawings. Storyboarded a few. Yeah. So what was your process there? A few things. Uh, well, again, it's still all up in the air. A lot of my videos and ideas, I have so many. And they're all so interesting and amazing. And I'm so interested in what I create. And then a week later, I'll be like, oh, well, that was amazing. But I have no way to actually make this happen right now. I have no way but to. But you storyboard with no limitations at first. I No, I already nerf myself when I storyboard. Okay. And I try and make things that seem realistic and then as time passes i realize that's even that's still out of my grasp so when you um, storyboard do you already take into consideration all the resources that you might have yes okay yeah uh what's possible and yeah it's tricky i think it it helps uh but music videos again it they can change mm. it's not like a film that you have heaps of people invested in and you can really pre-plan yeah. well for me at the moment anyhow music videos is we're doing it very much run and gun style what we can do what is possible to do without a big team without a budget without you know location hiring a location or yeah. or hiring people to do sort of cgi things or animations and fancy stuff it's got to be stuff we can do ourselves so the storyboarding process, yeah, it assists a little bit on that front. It is good to have an idea to go off, but more so it's it's adapting constantly. I think that's a, you bring up a good point. So it's, it's different. It's definitely a different process with the music videos at the moment than, yeah, than a planned I, film. Yeah, that has that's a, true. That has an artistic vision and a precise shot in mind from the start. Yeah, for example, we've worked on several of your music videos in the past. Um, we've mainly kind of run and gunned it. We've mainly done it without a storyboard. Yeah. But we're now working on something that is more of a narrative style music video. Too, and for fact. that too. And for <laughs> that, we're actually storyboarding heavily. And yeah. that I think is because when you're just working on a music video, it's you can kind of get away with just kind of figuring stuff out on the fly. Yeah. But I think when the moment that you introduce a story to the music video yeah. and it becomes almost more like a film, film yeah. that is when you need to actually storyboard. Yeah. It just makes more sense because then you can kind of see what the finished product is going to look like even before you filmed anything. And you can, you can attempt to time parts of the song to certain shots and certain things that are taking place. Yeah. On the screen at that specific time. Uh, whereas pre pre that on the run and gun front, I think it's it's more about making something that's eye catching, that's entertaining mm. and that's sort of memorable or gimmicky in a way. Yeah. Uh, and which which you can do and it's still you can still achieve a great quality doing it that way. But yeah, on the narrative end, if you're trying to convey a strong narrative through film, whether it's a music video as well as a short film, yeah, you, you sort of need to storyboard, don't you? I, I definitely think so. To communicate that narrative. I think there's a, there's a good balance. Yeah. I think if you're a beginner filmmaker and you haven't really worked on a lot of your own films in the past, a really great tool is using something like those inspiration images from other movies. And then you almost have the bare minimum of this looks at least like a Hollywood film. So it, it allows filmmakers to almost cheat and like be 10 steps ahead of their peers because all of a sudden every frame in your film already looks like it's straight out of a film. Like a brilliant cartoonist, how they, how they learn and how they get their strong start is putting tracing paper over the, over the comic strips oh, right. or the anime manga and they trace it until they can. I did that when I was a kid with, with certain yeah, video exactly. game That's characters and that's how you learn so, so then you take similar. that you almost copy paste it a yeah. little bit and tracing all, paper yeah tracing paper with film yeah and that that's pretty cool yeah and then from there as you get better and you kind of start to learn a bit more about composition and what that looks like then you can move on to maybe not ever using a storyboard again mm. 
Personally, I think a storyboard is necessary. I'm not going to go full blaze, you know, try to create these super amazing pictures. Yeah. I'm going to stick figure it as best as I can, draw frames and then maybe put like more squares in there to show camera movement with some arrows. And then I'll have a deck of images that are just inspiration images that I'd like maybe about that kind of gives me some ideas around lighting, the tone, the composition of the frame, maybe what sort of angle it is. Maybe it's a Dutch angle or maybe it's like a close up, whatever. Those things you can find online. There's a ton of them. Yeah. There's millions and millions of images out there. Just search for something that might, you know, tickle your fancy. <laughs> You first create the initial outline of what you're looking to create, and then you can color it in with various camera movements, different compositions, your locations, your set design, and so forth. So hope you've learned something new. Amazing. And we'll see you in the next episode. This is Creative Constitution, and that was all about storyboarding. Catch you in the next one. See ya. See ya.